<clears throat> All right, I think we're ready to get started. I hope everything's recording. Because there's a good chance that it is not. All right. Back again once with the Belgians. Up in the top left, I put a picture of my previous squad. That's what they should look like in the end. You can see they're very underwhelming at the moment. Kind of boring, very boring, very yellow. But eventually we'll bring out the best of them. I'm homesick today. So I figured it'd be a good time to get some work done because I've been procrastinating. The whole family's been sick, so I haven't done shit all for painting. You can see my nasty ass fingernails. I think I want to start with the gunmetals and layer over that with the wood. Gonna have to open a new can of lead belcher, it looks like. Yeah, this is old and dry. <clears throat> yeah, that one's trash. But I'm pretty sure it's over a year old, probably closer to two. Slime Barrel is usually here, but he is at home doing whatever it is he's doing. Since this is not our usual time, I'm doing it a little bit differently. Oh yeah, this sled belcher is way better. It's a little runny. That's okay, we can always fix it. We'll get the metal down first, then we'll go over it with the wood tone. That way it'll be in the right order when they stack, if that makes any sense. You don't want to cover the wood and the metal because that'll look ridiculous. At some point, <clears throat> I might need to look up these specific rifles. Make sure I'm putting the metal parts in the right place. It's really wet. Oh, yeah, we're spilling over to the flesh tone. That's okay, we'll go over it. This table's super janky. I built it out of plywood and uh, was that eight by four uh, wooden sheeting you get from Home Depot back when it was cheap and dirt. Now it's 30, 40 bucks a sheet. Let's look at our previous mini, make sure I'm painting the metal right. Yeah, it looks like the bolt is the entire top of the rifle. Sling attachment. All right. We'll use this guy as reference. Okay, just kidding.
I'm gonna hurry up and cover up all this yellow. Start filling in the details. Get these guys better looking. Early war is best war. So the guys are on my case to get this army ready. Because very few people do early war. But I feel like we've been over that a number of times. Again, this is just your regular old lead belcher. I used to use Vallejo <clears throat> gunmetal gray, but I find, I don't know, I just like the lead belcher a little bit better. It, uh, you can't really see the metallic flex as much. It's a little bit darker. Just all around, I think it's a better color. I was always against Vallejo for some reason, or I'm sorry, Citadel. I was a Vallejo fanboy. Especially with the dropper bottles, I wasn't a fan of the pots. But now you can't find Vallejo anywhere. Everyone's buying uh, all these new like boutique colors. It was a scale 75 and a bunch of other ones I've never even heard of. But Vallejo was great because their colors were specific, like German uniform, summer, Russian uniform. Whereas the Citadel shit's all fantasy stuff, Abaddon Black, Necromancer Cloak, shit like that. With the Citadel pots, I use them right out of the pot. I don't usually transfer them to a wet palette. So I gotta make sure I keep my brush moist, but not too moist. But I usually screw it up. Eventually we'll get a good wash to fill in all the gaps here. Dampen some of that brightness. It all makes sense eventually. I hope. I still need Belgian armor and Belgian artillery. So one of these days, maybe we'll do some tanks. Tanks are great because you can do them in a day. And it's an excellent excuse to use my airbrush. Oh, it says we have one viewer. Poor guy. My buddy streams, and he says he's pretty sure most people just watch him to have something on while they go to sleep. I should probably clean that up. It's a bad. These are all metal, so there's going to be some deformities, some miscasts, but all in all, they're pretty good minis. This will be some of the last World War II stuff I do. Just yeah, transition to uh, modern. I got a bunch of private contractors. Uh, Spectre Operations needs painted. 
I'm going to try to do a multicam black scheme, so that should be interesting. I've done traditional multicam. It's not too hard, and it comes out looking pretty good. Uh, actually, Spectre, the guys themselves did a really good uh, painting guide off of Multicam. Any overpaint we do, we can just go back with the wood color and cover it up. That's why I chose to do this way instead of that way around. I think it's easier to hide your mistakes doing the metallic first and do the wood last. It looks like the bulb, but it's kind of high up. At some point, we'll find a photo used for reference. Count those rivets. Hundred bucks says I paint over this with the wood and have to go back with the metal anyways and touch it up. So, so I'm not too worried because I know I'll be back for the final touches. I should probably do one mini start to finish in its entirety on here, but eh, maybe next time. Instead of just doing this assembly line, I'm sure it's not interesting. Yeah, it's so reflective with the yellow and the silver, you can't tell I've done anything. Got the whole force stacked up, ready to be finished. Shortly after the metal is done, we'll go over and wash the entire thing. And probably some known oil and do some highlighting. Bring out the details in the uniform. Their pockets and their regalia and the buttons are pretty detailed, but you can't really see them until you get them good outlined. I gotta make sure I'm staying in frame. I'm pretty bad about that.
using my Wargamer detail brush. I like that series of brushes. That's small enough to have fine detail and big enough to hold a little bit of paint. I have some of the other ones like the uh, Psycho. Psycho or an Insane? I have an Insane. I think the Psycho is even smaller than the Insane. The Insane is uh, very small. Like eyeballs and shit, where you don't need a whole lot of paint on the brush. Otherwise, it's hard to use because it's so few bristles and so small it can't really hold any paint. So it's good for the tiniest of details. So I upgraded to the detail. It gives me much more bristle than, uh, I guess, work surface of the brush. I use the Wargamer uh, Regiment brush, Army Painter Regiment. But I didn't let something continue to finish drying. And I dipped it in super glue and fucked up my bristles. That's a good excuse to get a new one. It lasts me. That's probably been two years of use. It's still going strong, but I glued all the bristles together and it kind of ruined it. Yep, still looks like shit, but we're coming. Reminds me of those old green army men. All sloppy, one color. I think most of our normal viewers are at work today. I wonder if I disable some of this light, that would help. Hmm. How's that? Slime Barrel was the one to figure out how to do the music. So, so I have no background music. And I'd probably screw up and get DCM8 anyways. So plastics are nice because before you glue the arms and weapons on, you can get them as painted as you need to to avoid tight areas like this. With the metals, you're at the mercy of how it was designed, fitting in these small cracks and what have you. B-A-R. One of the Americans used this, but it's actually a Belgian weapon. I think uh, FN was a Fabrique National. I think they're the ones that make it. I 
think it was 30 out six caliber. Fully automatic. To add some uh, automatic rifle support to the squad. And this is early war, so everyone's still using bolt actions. This isn't Battlefield or Call of Duty where everyone has an SMG. What's that one? The Ryby Rolls? I'm pronouncing that wrong. Like one was ever made. Only 100 rounds of ammo were ever made. They fired it 75 times or 17 times, some shit like that. And it basically failed every other round. And the rest of the ammo was destroyed and it never saw service. But in Battlefield 1, it was like a really good weapon. You know, I'm going to actually switch to my regiment brush because this is, well, the rifles are smaller, so maybe not. Nope, that part's the handguard. Okay, I screwed that up already. That's all right, we'll go back. It's more clearly defined on the back side. Just be safe, let's pull up an image of the BAR. It should be all metal, except for the hand guard and the stock, which I believe are black. That's correct. So the entirety of this will be gun metal. We'll have to come back and fix the handguard. You got to make sure you clean your brush pretty well between strokes because it does build up. Being so small, it makes it harder to deposit paint. Yeah, I'm going to have to run on these some soap over these when I'm done because I neglected to clean them last time, it looks like. And they're angry at me. They help uh, preserve your brushes, condition their brushes, and... Uh, Keep them the uh, keep their tip shaped.
Again, the wash will uh, fill in these seams where the different parts meet, kind of add some separation to it. I might need to turn this light back on. I'm still drinking my morning coffee. It says some threshold limits so you can't hear me drinking and swallowing. That's just gross. And that looks like a bit of metal I should have trimmed off and didn't. So we're going to have to hide that because I don't feel like going back and cutting it off. But by the end, I might have to, so we'll see. I believe this is the squad leader with the SMG. Or the assistant squad leader, possibly. I don't see anybody with a pistol, so I believe this is the squad leader. Some first generation SMGs here. We had a viewer a while back. He pulled up all the information for all these guns, and I forgot what he said this one was. Unfortunately, I don't know a whole lot about it. But I bet it was in Battlefield 1. I'm going to have to look this one up to find out exactly where the barrel ends and the stock begins. Oftentimes you'll see a wood or a metal collar halfway down the barrel. So a quick Google search. Well, that's definitely not it. Apparently, I also used a Vigneron M2. That was cool, but that's not what this is. Ah, right, here we go. This looks like... Okay, it's a sub-fed gun. I found photos of it, but uh, I want to see... 
a description of it. Looks like the magazine attachment is the collar, so it's going to be all metal. Looks like an MP18. That's the German stuff. Oh, that's not important. What's important is we know where the metal goes. There's a little too much water. Son of a bitch. Yep, there's his rank. I'm assuming that's uh, going to be the indicator that he is the squad leader. You can see that on his cuffs right there on his sleeve. On these metals, it gets really gross in here, and you really can't get it all out. But again, no one's ever going to look in there. So you can try to make your guys look perfect, but even the best guys, you zoom in on them and they, they look like shit because they're not designed to be looked at up close. You're supposed to see them from three feet away on the table. All right. All right, I'm liking that for right now. That we can't fix later. Lay it on a little thick, but we'll spread it out. Oops, that sucked. But that's okay. Again, we'll fix it. I'm assuming this guy's reloading. So his bolt's open, it looks like.
And after we do the wood, I think we're going to do the hands. Get the skin tone out of the way. Or perhaps we'll wash it off first. I'm not sure yet. Apparently this little tip right here is also metal. And these are just the basic Belgians from Warlord Games. The official bolt action. I don't know if anybody else making Belgians. A lot of the stuff they have rules for doesn't exist. Like I believe, yeah, you can play as Greeks and Norwegians, but who's making minis for that? I'd like to see that. Minor powers are more fun. You gotta play differently, they're harder. They don't get all the cool toys and support. Seems like a new German tank or unit comes out every couple weeks. This guy's a mortarman, he has no rifle. We have our sniper. Rifleman. I don't know anything about this rifle. We're going to have to guess what's wood and what's metal and come back and paint the wood in later. You gotta assume it's the same rifle, just with different attachments, but I could be entirely wrong. We'll paint the scope metal, but it'll probably be black or something, most likely. Go back with a black gray. It's basically black, but off a little bit, like black clothes that have been washed a few times, so they're not true black anymore. A little bit of age on it and some wear and tear, dust. And true black's often too shiny anyways. How often you see guys in the field with pristine boots in any theater? Hell, even at work.
I think what's happening is the paint in my pot needs to be shaking up. I get a dry layer on top, thickening it up. Oh, that's bad. And honestly, I'm not very uh, good at maintaining my brushes. I'm trying to, but you can see this one's already starting to curl up and some of the bristles are getting flyaways. So after this session, I'll take a break and go wash these. They've been like five bucks a piece, six bucks, maybe 10. It's probably 10 bucks. And it lasts for a year or two. I mean, I don't know. I can extend the more life of it, but. We're going to have to paint his hands skin tone again. Everything's so reflective, I can't see the gaps I'm making. I'm just filling them in properly. Things get a little crazy right here. All the detail in the rifle got kind of washed out, I think. We just didn't have it to begin with. You see his fingers. I don't think we use particular in the wood. All right, we'll call that. We'll come back to it. That's from the sniper squad, the sport. Those are the sniper, a spotter, a light mortar, and his buddy. Gave him a little blister. Now my pot won't stay open. I want to try something. Where is that? All right, this is my old regimen brush. I can do this a little faster. Even though it's larger, can we still do detail? Uh, I can feel the super glue on the bristles. I thought I got it all off. Let's scrape it on there. Yeah, the tip's all dead and flattened. For uniforms and like vehicles and big bulk work, it's still fine, but you can feel it. I don't know if anyone has any tips for trimming your brushes. Maybe I can save it and create a new tip, but probably not. Because it's sitting in this tray.
Well, that's a little better. But I wouldn't rely on it all the time. the wife texting. <laughs> cool. Me and Slime Bro have messed up the audio so many times. We've had streams with no audio, where the audio cuts out halfway, where you can hear half the people half the time. It's been ridiculous. It's been fun, but ridiculous. Usually we stream at night, so there's more people in here and more people in the call. We invite uh, the viewers to join the call and uh, share their shame piles with us. So if you kids out there in TV land are seeing this, join the Discord and join the call and be on our show. If you can call it a show or stream, whatever the kids call it these days. The idea is to get everyone excited about getting their own work done, you know? Well, as everyone I know has a pile of minis sitting on their table, unpainted. Now they have every intention of painting them. So everyone needs a little motivation. So maybe if we all work on it together, we're more likely to get a little more done. All right, let's do let's do the weapon wood next. Let's get that yellow covered up. We're gonna use Mornfang brown. I use this; it's a redder brown, but with a good wash, it uh, makes a nice dark wood tone. The Belgian rifles did seem to have a, a dark finish on them, darker. I find with the yellow priming, all the red base colors really kind of comes together in the end. Then when we do the basting, it'll all make more sense too when you see the footwatch we're going to add. I also did my USMC army with the Mornfang and it came out really well. I liked it. It does start off a little bright, a little shiny. But again, the wash really brings it together. I think after the wood, we'll do a wash because then we can start to do some of the detail work on top of that, finalize some of the weapons.
pot's not staying open, so it's being a pain in the ass to dip my brush. Man, it looks like I missed a bunch of spots. As we start to cover up the yellow, you can start to see better where we have some gaps. Like all through there. I may probably black that out so it looks like shadow. Since there's no telling exactly what it's supposed to be. And again, this underside shit. Does anyone ever pick up your minis and say, oh, you missed the underside? Or visually inspect them? I mean, do your best to fill it in, but sometimes, man, it's just... Like, what's all this shit? We know that's not part of a rifle. But it's too thick to cut out with a razor blade. Who knows? There's some tryhards out there I've seen will clean these things up to no extent, so... Maybe I'm just lazy. Fuck it. I like to do the hands in skeleton bone, and I go over them in uh, dark oath flesh, sometimes Gilman flesh. But doing the skeleton bone makes it stand out. But obviously, those uh, contrast paints have to use a lot of layers to get it to cover up. So if we just eliminate that necessity, the skeleton bone and the flesh tone over it, then they're coming out really good, really like lifelike, really natural color. Not too pink, not too yellow. I found a lot of the flesh tones, especially Vallejo. They say they're flesh tones, but they look nothing like it. Part of that is certainly the stock. Which part then? Maybe right here?
Yeah, there it goes. You start seeing the detail coming out. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I could be doing this wrong. Maybe I need to let soak up more paint in the brush. I'll get more out of each swipe. Maybe, I don't know. Everyone has an answer to what you need to be doing. Just find out what works for you. So let's try it. Okay. I have a paper towel. It's getting damper and damper every moment. Um, I rinse my brush, then I'll dab it on the paper towel. Try to pull off any excess paint, any water. So we'll keep it hydrated. I'll try to get more paint in the brush this time. So we have to keep going back to the same well. Hopefully I don't overdo it. It is pretty thick, but we have some thick spots to do. Actually, this is a little faster. Okay. I think after all these years, I know how to paint. All right, that goes almost through the entirety of the wood with just one dip. These guys have also been on my table for about a year, so I'm really interested in getting them done. So I'm kind of just pushing to get them out the door. If they're any glaringly ugly, glaringly garish, I'll uh I'll certainly fix it, but to be honest, I just want to get them done so I can play with them.
I say that, but this was supposed to be my magnum opus army. I was going to try to do all the detail I could. I've never been big on uh, the highlighting. Never really knew how to do it correctly. So every time I learn a technique, I try to make the next army better than the last. So this being my current army, I'm going to give it a little more time and care. But at the same time, get them the fuck off my table. So it's a conundrum. They sculpted this rifle much differently than the other one, so I don't know if it's the basic service rifle. I'd really like to know, so shortly I'm going to go look it up. I need answers. It seems to have more attachments, more detail than it's than the other models. Maybe because it was sculpted individually, it just came out differently than the rest. Who knows? I know this is supposed to be metal, but again, I'll fix it in post. Usually on the last day of painting, I'll go through with all the colors I've used and give each guy a quick rundown to make sure he's looking his best before he gets sealed and sent on to the display case. I got one of those cheap old Ikea, gla Ikea glass cases. I like them quite a bit. You can fit a lot of dudes on there. And it's like 60 bucks last time I checked. Apologies, I'm going to drink some coffee. I mean, there's a good possibility this is a German submachine gun. I believe the Chinese or the Koreans. Um, someone in Asia was using German equipment. Everyone just built and sold stuff to each other. I wish I could remember who it was. An Asian country was using German tanks. And uh, possibly their weapons as well. Small arms. There's a little bit of stock peeking out the back here. It's really nice. He's got to start to look more and more like people once you add every color. I think it's part of the fun of painting the dudes. Is it's just a silver chunk of shit. And they look cool on their own. Then you start adding color and it really 
brings it to life little by little and it slowly emerges in your hands. I think that's one of the coolest pieces of doing this. I think I mentioned I know a guy who puts names and ranks of all the dudes on the bottoms of his bases. I'm assuming he uses real guys from history, but I never asked. I'd be interested to know, though. And then where did he get the names? He does a, uh, a foreign army, of which he's a national of. So he took a lot of pride in his force. And he's the only guy in our friendly local game store running that army. So it's really nice when he comes around. Bigger rifle, we're going to put more paint on the brush. You want to keep from slapping it on, but you don't have to have so little on your brush that it dries up before you can use it all. So little that you have to keep going back to the well. And you don't want it so thin that it isn't thick enough to actually coat. But then they say do several thin coats, which is good too. I mean, how many and how much are you doing? Uniforms, that makes a lot of sense, but like objects, I'm personally not super worried about it. Like, do you need to see the subtle dimensions of the reflections on his coat? No, not really. Would it be cool? Hell yeah. But not when you're doing 30 dudes at once. It's like the trigger guard. I wonder if this is top loaded strippers. No, probably not strippers. It was probably one at a time. That I'm last thing. I wonder if there's a trap door in the bottom to release all the ammo. Yeah, that's a big holiday. You can see the yellow, but it's so reflective. I don't know if you can tell. That's actually yellow right there. It needs to be covered up. Ooh, there's quite a bit up there. All right, we'll come back with the metal here eventually. And he needs a bunch. Now the BAR, very little wood on this guy. Just the hand guard right here. The stock is like a black 
really looking. Not getting many viewers today, but that's okay. Strangely enough, we get a bunch of people viewing them after the fact. So cool. Not only trying to do tutorials or anything, there's way better dudes out there than us doing paint tutorials. I recommend the Miniac. He's one of the best. He does a lot of Warhammer, Warhammer heavy stuff, though. He's like almost entirely Warhammer. But he's really good at everything he does. Uh, Herba Derpa Derp, I really like that guy. He does all kinds of World War II stuff. He doesn't take himself too seriously. He did a, uh, a King Tiger in Tiger Stripe, actual black and orange. He did a pink panther, a big, bright pink fucking panther. And his work is just phenomenal. The detail he puts in and his weathering. He streams, but his YouTube channel, I think, is much more popular. And who's the other one? I think I'm gonna say Pete the Wargamer. I think he does a lot of painting. That's really good. Bad with names. But no for a fact, Herbert Derp Derp and the Miniac. Those guys are phenomenal painters. Highly recommend them. And there's another fella if you're doing basing and terrain, the terrain tutor. He's this English dude. And that guy can take garbage and make it look like a professional train room set up. Very inspiring. I stole all his ideas for his big Burma build for my uh, my uh, Pacific Marines. And this was years ago, two years ago maybe, three years ago. And he's back with more Burma stuff. So if you're doing jungle, check out Mel the Terrain Shooter. He also just released a pretty cool book about how to do everything terrain-based. It's a big hardback book. A lot of photos. If I owe anybody a beer, it's that guy. Oh, it's already been an hour and a quarter. And we've done what, two colors? Wow. That's why I say no more big armies. Because you can't give each guy the attention they deserve or that you may want to. Maybe we should do a tank next. I picked up a, uh, was it M3? M5 Stuart Light Tank. The Marines in Guadalcanal, which is what my Marine list is based off of. Uh, my favorite opponent, he sold his Japanese army because he didn't like it, and then bought another one, and he's already finished it. So we're doing the Guadalcanal campaign from uh, the Warlord books. And the Marines have not a whole lot of stuff. And it feels kind of greasy running big heavy Shermans against his. I mean, Shermans are medium tanks. Japanese armor wasn't the best. And even if it was, in the game of bolt action, it's not very good. So bringing Shermans is kind of cheese dick. Especially in Guadalcanal, they didn't really have a whole lot. Uh, the army was also in theater in a lot of places the Marines were. So people don't realize that the army handled certain parts of the equipment. The uh, Marines, um, again, I'm probably throwing in some inaccuracies. We're lean and mean, pretty light, mobile. And 
technically there were Marine Corps paratroopers in theater, but they didn't jump. They were just there. The only thing they got differently was a Johnson machine gun. Again, Warlord doesn't make minis for that. I don't know anyone who really does. I think the only benefit is you can take them as veterans. Yeah, I mess up a lot with the metal on this guy. I'm going to have to go back and really touch him up. That hole inside should be metal. You can see the uniforms are really patchy too. I'm going to wash them with a nice dark wash, fill in all the cracks, and paint over it again with the uh, core color. And it'll make a lot more sense later. I didn't put too much effort into it because I knew I'd be painting it again. Uh, plus, I just used the airbrush for this batch. Uh, this is the first time I used the airbrush for the uniforms on these guys. And I think the mix was a little light. So it didn't coat as much as I would have liked it to or as heavy. But again, that's okay because the wash is going to be doing the work. And then painting over it, why do it twice? Uh, in the off time, we've been crowdsourcing ideas from the community on what colors to paint our battle mix. It's been some interesting ideas. Some military style camo patterns, some bright, vivid colors. Some even looked like race cars, which those were kind of cool, actually. So soon we're going to have a whole bunch of battle mix. They've been built and primed, so soon they'll see the table. I'm really excited for that. Played a lot of Baltic as a kid, and the Mech Warrior and all that. This is back in the early mid '90s. I guess the property's changed hands so many times, or maybe there's been so many lawsuits or whatnot. There's all kinds of clones. And knockoffs. I don't even know what edition Battletech's up to now. It seems to be coming back, so that's pretty cool. And one of the guys at our local game store, he's kind of spearheading this game called Cab Strike Operations, which is like totally different from and legally distinct. From uh, Battletech, but it's Battletech. But they got their own mechs, their own minis, and it looks pretty cool. The rules are a bit different. Like, you don't have the sheets with the dots for armor and all that anymore. I think if it's like a streamlined Battletech, I'd, I'd describe it as. Never actually played it, but they had a lot of good deals where if you bought the rule book, you got an entire squad of your choice. So, like, five, five mechs, four mechs? They had a deal for a while. If you send them your email address, they'd send you two mechs, two quick start cards, like the stat cards, and uh, quick start instructions just for sending your email address. So I got two sets of those. And two years later, we'll finally paint them. Jeez, I think it's been two years since I ordered those.
And I had my little cousin's mom order them too for them. So if they don't play with them, I'm just going to take them. So I guess I'm almost 40 and I'm going to steal some kids' toys. When I think I have too much paint on my brush, I like to start in the big open flat spaces first and spread it out. Ooh, my headset's going to die soon, it says. Well, so we have two more rifles to do. Hopefully we have enough juice to do that. I'm going to go charge this and eat some lunch. Maybe I'll come back later. i got all day to do nothing. Baby started school a few weeks ago. And he's brought back, apparently... Every virus and bacteria my body hasn't seen, so the last year has been, especially the last three weeks, exceptionally barfy. But everyone I know with kids tells me that's just the way it is. If anybody plays Dust Tactics or Dust Warfare, join the Discord and send us your paint schemes. We have a a whole shelf of dust. One, two, three. I'm still at five mechs right now. Still in the box. Not to mention all the Conflict 47 mechs. So if you got any ideas for some Weird War stuff, let us know. We're looking for alternative paint schemes. We're trying to get away from the historical and be more flexible, more artistic. I've seen you guys out there show us some pretty neat stuff. You guys never cease to amaze me with your creativity. All right. One more, and I think we're going to take a break due to lack of batteries. I think this is my first solo stream. Slime Barrel is usually here in voice. We have some regular visitors, Yoshi, Dunk, and a bunch of other guys. They like to pop in and talk shit. The wargaming community is fascinating. It's made up of all kinds of people. A lot of veterans. Surprise. A lot of history nerds. Some are just war game nerds. Some are a combination of all of those things. So it's really interesting to see how each of those demographics approaches their armies. As far as how they build them, how they paint them. And what they're looking to get out of the game. Are they trying to win tournaments? Are they trying to have a cinematic adventure? If that's the case, I recommend Spectre Operations. That game is not competitive, but it is fun as hell. And you're going to have like something out of a movie. Buddy and I played. And it ended, all our guys were dead. It ended with two guys bleeding out, shooting at each other with pistols in a warehouse, laying on the ground. It was like the ending to <laughs> Reservoir Dogs. As someone pointed out. There's just so many game systems these days. So many mini sets. There's just so much to choose from. I have a 
bookshelf full of Vietnam rule sets and minis, and I haven't even touched those either. When we have time for all this. Um, Black Sight Studio, they just came out with their lunar game. It's like some astronauts on the moon fighting each other. That looks cool as hell. Who makes astronaut minis? Gotta get some of those. Will I ever play it? Probably not, but I want me some astronauts. I have a ton of dust mechs. Never played it. No, I played dust once. Tons of K-47. Never played it. A lot of this, I just like making the models because they're cool models, especially the dust in the Conflict 47. The weird-ass Weird War Panzer mix, I think, are really cool. But then check out that dude, uh, Machine and Krieger. I don't even know what his deal is, but he just makes these cool-ass robots. I think they're 135 scale, but... I mean, they're made up, so I don't think it matters. You can use them with anything. And they are gorgeous. A little pricey, but they're... Some really cool stuff. And some people even took it a step further, and someone made 3D printable cat heads. So you can replace the pilots of the mechs with cats. That's pretty funny. All right. Well, not too shabby. My headset's about to die, so I guess I need to go charge it. It's been an hour and a half, and we've finished our weapons, for the most part. All right, less and less, ye less, and less yellow every time. That's what we're going for. There is eventually, it's going to look like this guy right here. You can see there's a dramatic difference between the two. It'll all make sense in the end, I promise. A little sloppy at the moment, but uh, bear with me. I know some of you have been with us since the beginning, and we appreciate it. Keep talking shit. Keep sending us your photos, and uh, join us in Discord. Link's in the description, I believe, of our page. And we invite everyone to join us. Join the call. Show us your minis. Hell, you can even paint with us. And until next time, which may be in a little while, we'll see. You guys have a great night. Get after it. Let me turn how to cut this down.